What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as D365Geek, and today we are going to talk about some new additions to the Ribbon Workbench, a solution by Scott Jarrell, uh, and this allows you to run a webhook from a custom button inside Dynamics, which, mean, which opens up a lot of possibilities, including running flows on demand. So, what's this all about? Well, Strudgero, the genius mind behind the Ribbon Workbench, he released a update in December that was focused around a couple of new additions to his smart button solution. So you need to install the smart button solution and you also need to have the XRM toolbox installed or if you um, want to install the full Ribbon Workbench into your system you can do. And this um, this update to the buttons included a number of number of changes. Um, one of them being the ability to run a webhook from a custom button. So why is this important? Every time you kind of talk to users, they want to be the most efficient that they can be. Uh, and a lot of times, they don't want to be clicking through various menus um, or like searching around for certain buttons. So what the smart buttons and what the ribbon workbench allows us to do is drop a button straight onto the ribbon that allows us to um, immediately call a flow um, or do something else and then um, have that information relayed back to the dynamics record. So I'm going to go through some of the steps to do that and I'm also going to show you geocoding at the same time because that was kind of the example that I worked through for this. So I'm in D365 now. Um, I've got I'm on my accounts record, and I have a couple of um, a couple of buttons in the ribbon here. So you see, if I unselect uh, my account record, they disappear. But if I select them, I have these two buttons: get cohorts and clear cohorts. So these are my custom buttons. So if I click this, it's going to run the flow instantly and then return the re return the results. So if I if I select this. I could go to flow, so I could click here, and I could wait, and I can wait, and I can wait, and there we go. We see, we finally see a couple of um, a couple of flows, except none of these flows are the ones that I actually want to run. So I've got one on-demand um, flow here called account populate um, populate account number, but maybe you haven't shared this flow with other people, maybe it's your own flow, maybe you're using a service user, so users don't see the, the flow that they want to run there because it's not shared with them. But this allows you to just put it on the ribbon. Um, it's not gonna, it's not gonna um, interfere with anything. You can just stick it on there and then you can uh, run the flow and it will, um, it will run the actions inside there. So that's great. So that's that's fewer clicks. We can see it waited for ages there before it would allow me to like find it, etc. And this allows me to put it on on different ribbons as well, and also on subgrids. So how do we do this? Well, firstly, you need to you need to have a flow that runs from a HTTP action. Just so happens, I have one here. So this is my flow. Um, it's inside a solution, and it's called um, account update cords via button. So the first thing it does is um, once you once you go to create this, um, this HTT post URL, this is the important bit, this is the bit you need. When you first create your flow, this is going to be blanked out and it'll only generate this on save. We then have a bit of JSON here, which is basically just parsing what we are getting and then we want to get the ID back from it. Um, and the ID is a string that we're using. So this is essentially saying, when I run this, I want you to give me the JSON object. Of the object, it'll have a property. The property will have an ID. And of the ID, it's of type string. And I want to get that back. That's what I'm asking for here. So you can literally just copy this same JSON and it'll do the same thing. Next thing we're doing is we're doing a get record. So the get record action is going to, um, you specify um, the record type that you want to pass in, so uh, accounts in this instance, and the item ID is actually what we're getting from here. So if I click into here, item ID is this ID of the string, which is the druid, and that's what we want. 
Now we're getting this record because we want to um, we want to retrieve a bit of information for it. So as I said at the beginning, I use this for a geocoding example. So I am passing the information um, in. I'm taking the information from the ID, which is coming from Dynamics, and then we're going to get that ID and get that record. Once we've got that record, it gives us a bunch more dynamic fields, and we've got things like address line. Um, the the city, the zip code, or the postal code, country region, and this is a Bing Maps um, Bing Maps action, uh, a Bing Maps um, step here that we can use. So to use the Bing Maps actions, you actually need to sign up and get a Bing Maps API. Uh, the API is free. Um, you can just go um, and get a, a developer resource and get an API. And then once you um, put this step in, it's going to ask for a couple of pieces of information, including that API. Once we do that, we get access to a load of Bing Maps um, actions inside Flow. So you can, um, one of the actions is get location by address. And by doing this, it'll actually give us a bunch of information, including the longitude and latitude. So once I've got that information, um, I can go into my update record step. Um, so in here, uh, we've got, uh, we're specifying the account, the item ID, again, it's that same item ID that we're getting from the start. And then if I just show advanced options, scroll down, um, I've got the points coordinates. So I've got the longitude and latitude in here. So if I click into here, we've got these um, is what we're pulling back. Um, and down here, I've also got a combined uh, longitude and latitude as well. So these are all the these are all the actions that we get as part of that Bing Maps get, um, get address. So we have things like address country region, ISO2. Um, we have the confidence of the match, etc. the name, uh, the points combined, which is what we're using here. Um, I'm, I'm putting that into a special field down here. Um, the next bit is something I was using for testing, and I'm just going to get rid of that. The last step, it's fine, and then the last part is a response. So this is res the response back to the server. So saying, um, is it okay or is it not okay? So this is the first thing. So firstly, you need to create your flow, um, and in this flow, we've got five steps. So we've got when the HTTP action is received, um, we're going to get the record. We're going to do some uh, get the location by the address. We're going to update the record, then we're going to send a response back. So once you have these and you've saved it, you then get this HTTP post URL, and that's what we're going to need. So now we're going to switch over to the Ribbon Workbench. If you've not used the Ribbon Workbench and um, you are a system, um, you know, a system admin, a BA, a consultant, what on earth is wrong with you? It's one of the it's one of the best tools out there as is the XRM toolbox. Um, this, this tool allows you to do so much in terms of customizing the ribbon. It's so useful. I use it on nearly every project that I work on. So this is going to be a step-by-step -step guide on how to use the ribbon workbench. I'm just going to show you um, kind of what I did uh, and what you need to do. So I'm in ribbon workbench. I've opened a solution which, in, which contains my account entity. Um, and in here, um, I've I've also installed the um, the smart buttons um, solution into my environment. So this is an important step. You need to install smart buttons um, in, into your environment so that the room workbench can then use them. And then we have uh, these ones down here. So we have run report, run workflow, run webhook, and run qu and quick JS. So the run webhook is what we're what we're after here. So um, we have the, the home, the subgrids, and the forms. And all I'm going to do is just try and drop this onto the form just here and we get this pop-up. So the pop-up has uh, the title, so the name of the button, the webhook URL, so that's that URL that we had in, um, that we generated in Flow, um, so you paste that into there. Start confirmation text, so do you want some text to pop up to say, um, are you sure you want to run this? And then we have some JavaScript um, uh, callbacks. So we can have a success callback and a, a, an error callback. So what do you want to say when we've successfully run this? And what do you want to say when we've unsuccessfully run this? And what we've, uh, what we're saying back to the user. So I just cancelled that, so it's not run through. But 
I have uh, a couple of uh, a couple of buttons here uh, and then here on the, the home as well. So um, this one, get towards now. So you can see it's got get towards now is the title of it. So that's the name of the button. Uh, we got the URL that we've got from the flow. Uh, we've got the, the confirmation text here. So when we click the button, what's it going to say? So it's going to say get the towards of the record. And then we just got a couple of little pieces of JavaScript. This one just opens a, a dialog box to say the record's updated. And then the error one says, um, again, pops up a little dialog box saying, error, please contact your system administrator. And that's all it is. You drop the button on there, you put in these pieces of information, um, and away you go. You can do, you know, untold number of things after that. You can have conditional hides, you can show in hides, you can add it into flyouts, you can add it into you know, sections. There's so many things you can do. In this instance, all I'm doing is there's got a couple of buttons, one on the form and one on the home page, so that we can do this. Once I've saved and published it, we can go back to our um, our environment. So we've got the flow set up, it's, it's connected to that URL, and we can go into here. So as you see here, I've got um, a couple of different, um, I've got this one here, uh, this record. So if I click into this record and select it, we can see that we've got two buttons. We've got get towards and clear towards. The clear towards is basically a duplicate of the same get towards, but it's just going to um, remove these uh, long longitude and latitude. So if I click clear towards now, we get a little pop-up to say clear, clear long and lat on one records. Yep, we'll do that. Records updated. You can see it's updated in the background as well that we've gotten rid of that. So if I click into here for a second. So this is just a dummy record called SS Corp. Um, it's at the University of Strathclyde Technology and Innovation Center in Glasgow, but we don't have any longitude or latitudes in here. Now that that university sounds familiar. Maybe I'm speaking there soon. Uh, that'll be interesting. Um, but again, at the top, we have get towards and clear towards because we, we've added it to this ribbon as well. So we've got our three um, our three fields here, latitude, longitude, and combined long lat. If I click get towards now on here, it says get the towards for this record. And I'll click OK. You can see the bar at the top was waiting. Ah, please contact your system administrator. That's, that's interesting. Um, that shouldn't have happened. But we actually did have these updated here. So we, we do have this information in here. Um, and that's that's how this works. So you can you can click this button and it runs and it, it, it generates it. So what that's done is that's gone to this Power Automate and it's run from here. It may have been that it's just not um, uh, not run successfully. Failed 20 seconds ago, that's interesting. It still ran, uh, ah, composing, but ah, right, yeah, Trace, that's the, because I've not saved it, that's the reason why um, there's an error. So, good to do this on live videos. We delete this step again. You saw me delete it earlier. Uh, it's because I was testing it earlier, and then we had a problem. But what we will do, just for uh, clarity, we'll clear the cords. Uh, we see the little thing at the top. Go across and say, please wait. Long and lat cleared. We press OK, and now we can click get cords again. Do the same, and it should work this time. Record updated, we got a successful error message. So it's actually really useful um, to understand uh, when things have failed, we're going to get a fail error message back. Um, so that's good, and when things work, we get the successful error message back. So there we have it. So that is a quick way to geocode, and also a cool way to uh, run flows from a custom button. So. All the uh, all the thanks should go to Mr. Scott Jero, uh, and I'll link his YouTube in the description. Uh, I'll link a link to my blog where I've explained this whole thing as well in detail. There'll be uh, on that blog article. There's links to um, the Ribbon Workbench and the Smart Button Solution, um, and this is really really cool. Big thanks to Scott Jero for making this solution. He is fantastic and if you ever meet him he's the nicest guy in the world so big thanks to him for this solution uh, and yeah I hope this will be useful to people it's certainly useful to me I'm definitely going to be doing stuff like this in the future with custom buttons and running, running webhooks because it has so many implications for me um, and really helps me uh, will really help uh, further projects that I work on so let me know what you guys think 
what will you be using this for? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, please like and please share it with your friends. It's always appreciated. Um, if you've not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you want to connect with me on social media, all my details are at the end. And I'll see you next time.